Okay, so now we want to find an estimate of the mean time spent exercising by these adults each day. So I've got the table here and I'm ready to start finding an estimate of the mean. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's make a bit more space here for ourselves. Okay, so they very kindly in this question gave us the midpoints of each of these intervals which is what we need when we're finding an estimate of the mean time because uh, we don't know what the actual value of any of the data is. We just know that there's 25 entries in this range, but we don't know what the actual values are. So that's why we take the mid interval value to try to work out the um, an estimate of what those values are. So we know what to multiply this 25 by. Okay, so 25 times, um, you know, 7.5 will give us an estimate of the, to uh, of the total um, times for these 25, the sum of the times for these 25 people. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the frequency times the mid interval for each of these groups and that will give us an, and we'll add them together and that will give us an estimate of the total time spent exercising by these 100 people. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 25. I'm going to do 25. Let's just uh, get this sorted. 25 times, um, that's 7.5, plus 17 times 22.5, 22.5, plus 28 times 45, plus 24 times 90, plus 6 times 180. And we're going to take all of that I'll just do it like this. I'm going to divide that by the total number of people, which was 100. And that should give us our answer. Okay, so that's equal to, let's just use a calculator. Okay, so we have that's 25 times 7.5. Do it like this. 25 times... 7.5 plus 17 times 22.5. Let's just double check with this. Yeah. I'll just double check with, with that as well. Um, plus, um, you got 28 times 45 plus 24 times 90. plus 6 times 180 and that's divided by 100 which gives us 507 over 10 which is 50.7 so 50.7 so you can say the mean time is 50.7 minutes okay that's part C now part D says Calculate an estimate for the standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation is a measure of how far each data is away from the mean time. And it's given by a nice, simple little formula. The mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. Okay, now the mean of the squares is conveniently given to us in this. Okay, that's not the mean of the squares. That's the, the sum of all the squares. So basically... Um, They've taken the mid interval values and squared them and multiplied them by 25, 17, 28, 4, 24, 4, and 16, added them together. So that's basically the sum of the squares. We want the mean of the squares. So we're going to take um, the sum of fx squared, divide it by the frequency, which is 100, and take away the square of the mean. We'll all just write it like this as a sigma squared. The square of the, no, I won't call it sigma, what am I doing? It's mu squared. And I'll just call it um, the sum of the, the square of the mean. Okay? The square of the mean. Okay, so we've got this, which is 4, 5, 5, 5, 1, 2.5 divided by 100. Okay, that's the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean, which is going to be um, 50.7. That was its exact value, squared. And that gives us our 
variance. Okay, so let's work out what that is. So you're going to have 455512.5, okay, divided by 100, okay, and you're going to have minus 50.7 squared, okay, 1984.635, 1984.635. Point six three five. So therefore, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, which is equal to the square root of this value here. The square root of the answer equals 44.5492. 44.5492. To 3SF, that's 44.5. That's the standard deviation. Okay, that gives us a, an indication of how far each data entry is away from the mean. Okay, and then part E tells us to describe giving a reason the skewness of the data. Okay, so what we need to do to find the, the skewness of the data is as follows. We need to find or compare some of the different averages we found. So let's look at what we found. Uh, the mean of the times we found was 50.7 and the median we found was, where was it? Estimate of the median was 38.6 okay 38.6 okay so here we can see that the mean is greater than the median okay so remember the median is going to be the middle position so it's going to look something like this it's going to have a positive skew if the mean is greater than the median then the tail points to the right so it's positive skew so you can say that this is the reason okay the mean is greater than the median therefore we have positive skew positive skew Okay, that's and the reasons given there, you could put it in words if you want. The mean is greater than the median. That's the reason they're looking for. And positive skew. Okay, and there we have the answer to part E. Okay.